find the domain of the function f of x equals natural log of x plus 1 over x minus 1 plus natural log of x minus 1 minus natural log of x plus 1. Okay, it's tempting to pull out an identity for natural log, collapse things, and then find the domain. That's going to get us into trouble. So, let's take a look. If I take the identity natural log of a over b, it's going to be natural log of a minus natural log of b. We apply it to the first term. So we'll have natural log of x plus 1 minus natural log of x minus 1. Okay, I can't break things up any further since I don't have a rule for natural log of a plus b. Now, all of our terms go away. I'm left with 0. So the answer would be all real numbers. But if you try to put in minus 3, into the original function, let's see what happens. So I'm going to have minus 2 over minus 4, so it's going to be natural log of a half. That's good. You're allowed to take natural log of positive numbers. Then I'm going to have natural log of minus 4, natural log of minus 2. That's bad. We're not allowed to take the natural log of a negative number. So what went wrong? When we combined, we made a lot of numbers that weren't good are now good for our function. So, how do we do things to make it right? We're going to use the idea that natural log of box is going to be defined where box is greater than zero. So the idea is we're going to have three boxes here. First one is going to be x plus 1 over x minus 1 in the box, set that greater than zero. x minus 1 in the box, set it greater than zero. x plus 1 in the box, set it greater than zero. So it's going to give me three equations, and for a function to work, all three have to work at the same time. So let's take a look. Now, for the last two, straightforward, you move the number to the other side, you're going to get x greater than 1, x greater than minus 1. For the first term, you need to do a little bit of work. Now if you note, this is going to be a rational function, x plus 1 over x minus 1. So if I want to know where we're positive or negative, what do we do? We find the zeros, we find the vertical asymptotes. It's going to break up the real line. And then I can check one point on each region. Once I know the sign at one point, I know the sign for the whole region. Now, where are the zeros? It's where the numerator is zero. So we have a zero at minus one. For the vertical asymptotes, that's where the denominator is equal to zero. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals one. So we have three regions, and check a point in each region. If we try the middle region, put in zero, we're gonna get one over minus one, okay? That's not gonna make our inequality hold, so we throw that region away. That's where it'll be negative. Then I'll try two in this far region. So we'll have three over one, that's positive, so that whole region's gonna be good, the whole region's positive. And then on this side, beyond minus one, we'll try minus two. It's gonna give me a minus one over minus three, it gives me a one third. That's positive, so the whole region's positive there. So, all the points that'll be good for x plus one over x minus one, we're gonna have x greater than one or x less than minus one. Now, to get all three of these to work at the same time, what's gonna happen is we're gonna be left with x greater than one. So that's gonna be my domain x greater than 1. Now, let's get back to the graph. So, when we work things out, we got 0. 0 is still fine as long as we just stick to our domain. So the graph of the function is going to be 0, but we're only allowed to start at 1, and I put a circle at 1, and then we can just move off to the right. So that's the graph of our f of x.